Okay, so here is a review of the study guide very, very quickly. So if you need to write something down, you should pause the video because I'm going to try to go through very quickly. I will show you calculator steps. I'm not going to write anything down because that's what part of your work is supposed to be done as I explained in class each time. Okay, your first problem deals with two variables, independent and dependent. The more wrapping paper sold means more money is raised. So money is dependent on the wrapping paper. The inside is the independent. Might be something to write down. Inside is independent and the wrapping paper, nope, the money depends on the wrapping paper. Money depends on the wrapping papers right here. Wrapping paper is independent and money depends on the paper. So your answer is D. Okay. Number two, solve the following equations. You need to know your order of operations and know how to work those backwards to find the correct answer. Okay. Domain of a function, you're going from left to right. So the domain, you're looking for the farthest point to the left and the farthest point to the right on your x-axis. Okay. And if they are closed, then you have a bracket. If those circles are closed, you have a bracket. If those circles are open, then you have parentheses. Okay. Down on this problem, uh, let's put that one open, this one closed, that one open, and this one closed. Okay. It will be obvious on the exam. Domain. Farthest to the left is negative 6. Farthest to the right is 8. They are both closed, so they're both in brackets. Identify the range. That is the lowest to the highest. So the lowest point is right here. Going across to my y, that gives me to negative 4. My highest point is here. Going across here is 3. And so I'm going from negative 4 to 3. They're both closed, so again, it's brackets. Okay. Identify the function where the domain is. Goes from negative 3 to 1. Well, negative 3 to 1 is this piece right here. So that is in your form y equals mx plus b. Okay, your slope is 1 because we go up 1 over 1 each time. And it crosses the y axis at 3, which is why you have y equals x plus 3. Okay, increasing. Increasing and decreasing. We talked about starting to the left and tracing with your finger. And this is increasing. This is constant, and this is decreasing. And if you're looking for increasing, you figure out where it started. It started here, which means it goes on forever and ever that way, which is negative infinity. And it increases all the way up to that point, which is x equals negative 1. Okay? And they are always in parentheses when we're talking about our intervals of increasing and decreasing. Okay? Between positive and negative, we looked at where y equals 0, which is our x-axis. And positive is everything above the x-axis, and so you figure out that that point is at 2 and 4. That's where it goes between. And again, intervals are always brackets. Our function, again, it's in Unit 1, Lesson 3, shifted left to the four units. Left is our x motion, and that means it's inside the function, and x always does the opposite. So left looks like a plus 4. Okay, what is the equation of the absolute value function? Okay, you can go graph each of these. If you don't know what the absolute value function is, you can go put it in the calculator. This graph goes down, which means you can ignore the positive one because I need a negative out front. And from 0, 0, I went left 8 and down 3. Left is the opposite. Okay, if it affects the x, it's the opposite. So there's left 8 and down 3. Here is our y equals x squared function, and it has been shifted from 0, 0, and it went left 3 and up 1. So again, left 3, we've had three problems here. If you don't know left is plus, okay, you can put each of those functions into your graphing calculator and see which one matches the graph. Okay, so on to 11. Um, what is the, we have a function, what's the domain range? G of x is a translation of f of x minus 2. Minus 2 is inside the parentheses. It affects the x. It moves to the right two units. So that would add 2 to both of your domain values. So if I asked you for domain, that would be your answer. But this question asks for the range. This does not affect the range, so my range does not change. 12. Reading our graph. Name the function that derives, describes the distance. We talked about that in class, in every one of my classes, so uh, I don't know. Um, the key that you need to pay attention to is where it goes through. I'm looking at 1 to 2, which I highlighted right here. 
you have to find the slope, which is the rise over the run. It's going down. That's why it's negative. So negative 300 over 1 is a slope. So go cross out the positive ones. And then we had the point 2, 400 that we talked about. So that's why your answer is C. What does 5, 400 mean? 5 is your X, so that's describing your time in hours, at 5 hours. And uh, Y is the distance from home in miles. So 400 means he is 400 miles from home. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean he has traveled 400 miles. Determine D of 1. Uh, the easiest way to do that is go to this graph. D of 1, go up to the graph and you find out that it's 700. Sorry for scrolling, I don't know a better way to do that. Um, D of 1 is 700, which means in one hour he is, again, 700 miles from home. Okay, determine the value of D of t equal to 450, explain the meaning. Okay, that's what this green line is up here. It's showing you where 450, and it's actually three points. Okay, but the best answer here is that it has two answers. One of them is two and a half hours, and the other is three and a half hours, and both times he's 450 miles from home. All right, 15, uh, I think I did them all. 16, solve the inequality. You're going to add four to all parts. So add four, you get eight. Add four, it goes away. Add four, you get negative four and then divide by 2. And when you do, you get that inequality. Equals means it's closed. Op uh, not equal to means it's open. Okay? On this one, you solve each one individually. You're going to add 2, which is going to give you negative 10, and divide by 2, which is going to give you negative 5. So the only one would be these two, so you got to do the other part. You subtract 3, and you get 4, and divide 4 by 2, and you get 2 which is why A is our answer. An OR is always the type where we have the two rays going in opposite directions. Not always, but more times than not. Absolute value equations. Um, there are buttons in your calculator if you want to put those in. Okay, For this particular problem, uh, the absolute value of X minus 6. Absolute value button. I'm going to click on my little template next to the 9. And the absolute value, come on, and it said x um, minus 6. I'm writing minus 6 here because the problem says x minus 6, but I was plugging in a equal to 16. So if I put in 16, do I get 10? Yes. Should you stop there? No. Because if 16 worked, then you obviously know you need to try and see if negative 4 works. So what you can do is you can go and highlight this on yours you can go hit control C and then you come down here and hit control V and instead of 16 you can put negative 4 plug it in and you get 10 so that tells you that um, the answer is B 16 or negative 4 okay subtract 7 absolute value of X equals 10 again 3 works but so does negative 3 so the answer is C um, now, another thing you can do um, if you don't want to solve it algebraically, you don't want to plug it in, this is the thing where we did y sub 1 was equal to this, y sub 2 was equal to that, or add it to both sides and put it in your calculator. Um, if I did the absolute value of x minus 2, this is number 20, um, the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to negative 15. Well, that's enough. Okay, so go to a graph page. Control, page, graph. And what we had was, I think it said, the absolute value of x minus 2. So we graph that. And then we have, what was the other one? Negative 15. So now I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to type in negative 15. And when I graph it, you don't see it, because the y value at negative 15 is below there. So, from my graph, do those things intersect? They do not, so the answer is no solution. Okay. The other way to do that we've talked about is to put the 15 to the other side. I like that better because then it's you're just looking for the zeros, and we're consistent with that. So, if I were to do that, um, I'm going to add a graph, and this time I'm going to say I want the absolute value of x minus 2 
and instead of minus 15, it's plus 15 because I've put it all on the same side of the graph. But plus 15 should hopefully let you know that it intersects at 15. So there's the graph. All you have to do, y'all, is click on a number and type in, you know, hit the backspace and type over it to change the size of your window. But that plus 15 tells you that that's the y-intercept, so I know that it crosses up there and it clearly never touches. So again, no solution. 21 and 22, you've got to know the vertices are the corners of this shaded region and make sure that you read all the details with the graph to know that it's in hundreds and not just ones. Your hooded sweatshirts, again, I talk about this in every class. Um, one class wrote this one, and I will put that up there because um, that was probably easier for some people. That was 10x plus 5y. And then you could think of each of these points being x and y. And that might help you get the right answer because the sweatshirts are on the x-axis and the crew necks are on the y-axis. So that works that way. All right, moving along. 23. Again, another one you can put straight in your calculator. Y is greater than or equal to X minus 1 plus 3. Control, doc, putting in a, 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 um, an equation. All right, it said Y is greater than the absolute value. So if you're in your equation bar and you hit backspace, then I can change it and say I want to be greater than. So Y is greater than, go get my absolute value. I don't remember what it said. X minus 1 plus 3. So X minus 1. Go outside the absolute value. Plus 3. And there is your graph. And that's the one that matches. So that's 23, 24. These are your X coefficients. These are your Y coefficients. These are the constants. Okay? So X, negative 2 and 14. Y, negative 9, negative 2. Uh, 11 and 15, and that's not what that says, so that's why C is your answer. Okay, solution of the system. You can plug those numbers in and figure out what it is. I will show you how you can quickly do it with matrices. Um, I'm just going to go to a new calculate page. This is the nice thing about this, uh, moving things back and forth. Um, I'm going to R, R, E, F, and parentheses. Um, a matrix, and this matrix is going to be, uh, when you look back at it, y'all, it has two rows, and it has one, two, three columns. Okay? So that means I need to use this one. Come on. And I'm going to have two rows and three columns. And again, I don't know what my numbers are. Four, four, negative 12. So four, four, you tab between your entries, four, four, negative 12. And then 4, 5, negative 8. 4, 5, negative 8. And you hit enter. And that tells you y equals negative, excuse me, x equals negative 7, and y equals 4. So your ordered pair, negative 7, 4. All right, 26. Okay, just like the matrix that I did, 26. <coughs> um, excuse me. You would do the RREF command which I have done, um, but I want to show it to you so that you can see. If you hit control on the up arrow, you see all the pages that you have. And I'm going to go to that one right there. And I'm going to scroll up and show you there is number 26. I did RREF parentheses 532. Those are my, these are my X coefficients. These are my Y coefficients, my Z coefficients, and my constants. Now when you hit equals, it gives you this matrix that tells you x equals 1, y equals negative 3, and z equals 0, which is answer A to that problem. If you forget, I mean, hopefully you write REF on your note card, but if you forget, you can always hit menu and then go to matrix, and then there is RREF, RREF for reduced row echelon form. Okay, find the inverse of Q. Okay, that is how you do it. That is the work that you should have on your paper. And also, to show me work on here, you should write, you should be writing down anything I tell you on a calculator. If you did it on the calculator, you can tell me the buttons that you push. So this particular one, or this one here, you can, again, if you want to make sure you get the right answer, I can go down to the bottom. 
and I'm going to go get a 2 by 2 matrix that I have to find the inverse of it. And the matrix is 1, 2, 3, 4. And to find the inverse, you raise it, so I'm going to use my little caret symbol, raise it to the negative 1, and then hit enter. Okay? Now, if your answers come up as fractions and you want decimals, if you will hit control enter it will give you the decimals so that might help some of y'all okay number 28 says use your graphing calculator to find the inverse so you're going to do the same thing and i will go do it so you can see so i'm going to hit template this time it's a three by three so i'm going to click that one three by three and put it in i've got one one two four six six Four, two, zero. Go outside, raise it to the negative one, hit enter. It has fractions, but all the answers on the exam are in decimals, so you're going to hit control, enter, and it gives you the decimals, and you can find your answer. Okay, that's 28, 29. Okay. Same thing, okay, for 29, um, we can go enter some matrices, all right, I guess that's why you're watching. So, I'm going to hit a 2 by 2, I don't know why it has to do it twice, okay, so 1, 0, 4, 5, go outside, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and hit multiply, and then I'm going to go get the template to get another 2 by 2, and this one is 2, negative 1, 3, 7, enter. And that answer is B on your study guide. Okay, these problems, uh, I have a video on them, so if you need more help on them, I'd say go watch the video on that, Unit 1, Lesson 2, uh, of just, actually, uh, hold on one second real quick. Okay, that's a little um, mistake on my part, so let's see if I can fix that real quick. This is not unit three. This is actually unit, I mean, excuse me, not unit one, it's unit three. Which means I gotta go fix all these. Okay, these are unit three. Three, 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 three. Yeah, unit three. Okay, so when we talked about that in every class. Again, composing functions, solved by factoring. One of the things that I did point out to people um, if you end up with this kind of answer, the calculator is not going to help you so much. you got to do it by hand. But if you have an answer like these, you can always graph this. Okay? That says y equals x squared minus x minus 12. Um, set equal to 0. So I can go, again, control, new doc, because I can have a bunch of pages. Okay? So if I do that, I'm going to put in, what was my equation? It was x squared minus x minus 12. Okay, well there are your roots right there, y'all. That's negative 3 and that's positive 4. Negative 3, positive 4. I don't know what, you know, I think it's faster to factor, but it's just a way that you can check yourself. So you can do that anytime you have an equation to solve it. Set it equal to 0, graph it, and find where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, uh, discriminant you have to use for these. There is your formula that you need. Taking the square root of both sides. Best if you um, isolate your radical because people make mistakes otherwise. Again, telling you exactly where to find it. Um, solve by completing the square. I talked again. Um, if your answer was no solution when you put in a graph, then that graph will not intersect the x-axis. When we put this in, it does intersect it. So that tells you that no solution is not the answer. So that's what that is. Again, graphing. Um, uh, so, I mean, I can show you this one. Let's go do this one just in case you're interested and don't want to dissect um, the problems on the exam. So we have, I'm going to go again to a new graphic page. Control doc, graph. And remember, this time it's y is greater than or equal to. So I'm going to hit backspace y is greater than or equal to x squared plus 2, x plus 2, and that is that graph. And then I'm going to hit the tab key because I want to bring up another one, and this time I want it to be just less than. 
and it is negative x squared minus 4x minus 2, and it looks like that. Now, I don't know if y'all can see that, but see this graph now is dotted, and this one is solid. And, and that's going to be the main difference, But that, if that helps you, if you don't know from looking at it. Okay? <laughs> Alright, A plus B, I. Uh, this problem I did, and I think I did it for most people, so I will do it again. 2 minus 5i. If you're on a... Uh, there's one right here. So I'm on a calculate page. And I want a fraction, so I'm going to hit control divided by, because above it is a little fraction template. And on the top of that, I'm going to put a 2. And on the bottom of it, I'm going to put 5 minus i. And i is on with the pi button. So 5 minus i. Now, there's your answer. 5 over 13 plus, that is the correct way to write it. Uh, it's not written the correct way on the exam, but you got to figure out which one of those is the answer. If it said 5 13 plus 1 over 13i, Hopefully you realize you can cross those out, and that says 5 minus, and that says 5 plus, so you should know that A is the answer to that. Number 50, solving, if you tried to graph that, you'd find out it doesn't intersect the x-axis, so there's going to be an I in your answer, which is crossing that one out. But um, again, I think completing the square is the easiest because you can't factor 17. All right, 51. Section 4.8, go review it if you don't remember how to graph. Um, these, punching it straight in on a inspire is not going to help you um, with these. You've got to know how to do them. So I would go in those section notes or look in the video on that list and if you need more help. Um, I do want to caution you about this one. When you put things in a calculator, if you can put it in a calculator and get one of your answers, make sure you pay attention and put it in exactly the way it's written. If they're parentheses, make sure you put parentheses in the calculator, and if not, then don't, so you can make sure you get the right answer. 58 is a problem that um, you can graph it. Uh, I did to begin with, but I think it's easiest probably just to plug in the numbers and figure out which one works. But again, if you move the two over and you graph it, um, you can find these answers. Um, and actually, I will do that for you real quick. If you don't watch it, you can just fast forward through it but in case um, some people are interested. So, <coughs> excuse me, a new graph page. <coughs> excuse me. So I have the square root, which is above my squared button, and it is 2x plus 4, go out of the radical, minus, control, square root of x, go out from under the radical, and then minus 2, because i got to bring that 2 to the other side. So when I graph it, it looks like that. <coughs> And if you look back at your answers, it has 0 and negative 16 and 16. So you might change these and make sure, the class is not over, um, make sure that you include negative 16 to 16. Once I clicked on that, I can hit tab and go through these different ones. So I'm going to make that one go to 20. Okay? And that one, again, it doesn't matter. Now, it looks like it goes through at 16. You can either zoom in on that, use your analyze function, or you can hit control T and go look at negative 16. Oh, if you notice, negative 16 is not an option. If zero is an option, okay, it has zero in my table, so that is a root. And if I go down to 16 to see if it's a root, and it is a root. So control T takes that table off, but that is another way that you can do that problem. Okay? Uh, that's your chart. You need to know that chart. A lot of people are missing that on the test, so I hope you'll put that on your note card. Okay? Again, you can put that straight in the calculator, but I talked in class about, you know, what kind of shifting and the up-down behavior. This is po odd positive, so it has down and then up, which means you don't need to look at these two. And the one-fourth flattens it out. It does not shift it up, so that's why that's the answer. 61, same kind of thing. We talked about it. Again, you can put it in your calculator. Um, go ahead and I'll do that in case somebody doesn't. So you could do it with the same one with the last one. So, uh, but the last one's a little bit easier than this one. So we have three uh, parentheses x plus two. Oh, poo. <laughs> three parentheses x plus two p 
close the parentheses, raise it to the third power, come down, and then minus 3. Okay? So, which one does that match? It's a little bit easier when the exam is right next to you, and of course, B is the answer. Okay? But I talked about it. If you didn't know, it shifts it left, and it shifts it down, and, and it has a down-up behavior. So this is the one that goes left and then down from that zero, zero point. Okay? Uh, same thing, again, you can put it in your calculator and graph it or solve it to figure out where it crosses. Um, but again, the important thing is to know that it is odd and negative, so the end behavior is up and then down. So this is up and that's down. That is not. So that's not one of our choices or a possibility. Okay, 63, what else? So the graphing calculator. This is one I did at the very beginning. Well, not really, but anyway. Uh, you set up your factors. Um, that's not a graphing calculator problem. So uh, you just have to multiply it out. Or you can go plug in each of these and figure out which ones give you those roots. So I think it's easier to multiply it out. What are the zeros of the function and their multiplicities? Now this one I did graph. I factored it to show you how to do it algebraically. We talked about it in one of my classes. But you can also graph that problem. So if I were to graph it, I would have, let's go see if I can find it. Um, I think it's right here. Yep, that's it right there. So that's, this is number 65. Well, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 3x squared. And they're asking us which of the, what are the zeros of the function? So you should be able to tell that 3 and 1 and 0. Okay, and the other thing that it's asking you about this is which ones have a multiplicity of 2 and which ones have a multiplicity of 1. Well, what we talked about in this lesson, which is 5.2, okay, if it has a multiplicity of 1, then it goes straight through the graph. Boom. If it has a multiplicity of 2, it behaves like a quadratic and it's a parabola, so 0 has a multiplicity of 2. So that's how you do that problem. Uh, number 66, determine which binomial is not a factor. Um, again, you can do, you've got to know, you can go long division for each of these, or you can know the related root and do synthetic division with each of these, which the numbers are kind of big and I didn't want to do that. Or you can go put this function in your calculator. So I went and put it in my calculator, and it gave me this right here. Here it is right here. I entered it. 4x to the 4th minus 21x cubed plus minus 46x squared plus 219x makes 180. And if you look at all of those, okay, what I did in the classes was remind you that control T brings up your table. And I'm looking to see if negative 4 or negative 3, I do not have negative 4, I do have negative 3, and I do have positive 5. Control T, I'm going to take that off. So I have 5 and 4 and negative 3, and that kind of looks like negative 3 fourths, which means that I have all three of these and not that one. So that's why A is not a factor. All right, 67, we're just about done. I'm going to be done under 30 minutes, okay? So if you have any questions, email me. Um, I give you the lessons, 5.4. If it's a factor, you, gotta, you can do long division, x minus 2, into this to get the answer, or you can do synthetic division and get your answer, either one. Uh, a possible rational roots calculator is not going to help you. Quotient, uh, again, long division or synthetic division, or know how to factor. And then the last one, again, graphing calculator is not going to help you. So, I'm under 30 minutes. I tried to do fast because I um, want you to not spend so much time watching the video. Perhaps review. If you have some questions, you may email me or come see me before school. Thank you very much. Good, do a good job studying for me, please.